Peace and blessings, family. Peace and blessings. Mark the messenger. We're back in another video. This one's going to be about how to overcome spiritual warfare. And I get this, you know, on my messages or in the comment section. It's people are going through stuff. So hopefully this video can help you all out. Next time someone hits me with a message, I'm going to just link with this video. And this could be go if you're going through, let's say if you're battling like demons uh, or maybe demonic strongholds. Or if you're in like in a phase of going through deliverance, you got to expect. You got to expect the attacks because remember when you're breaking free from the chains the devil sees that and he's just trying to stop you he wants to keep you in darkness so the more you draw closer to the light you got to expect to get attacked so this video is going to go over everything you need to know when you're going over uh, when you're going under spiritual warfare so don't forget to like the video subscribe to the channel number one is you want to be sober and diligent okay so pretty much which all comes down to being watchful okay when you're drunk or when you're high you're not not to say that you can't be aware but you're just not as aware, you know, and that's why when you're when the Bible says over and over again, it says uh, the end is at hand, uh, be sober, because the end is at hand. So you want to be able to be watchful and knowing what's coming, because we, we all know when we when we get we used to get drunk all the time, or maybe some of us got high, whatever the case may be, you just weren't there. Okay, so you want to be sober, and also it all comes down to acknowledging. Okay. When you're going through it and you don't even know what spiritual warfare is, you have no you have no idea about any of that type of stuff. Okay. First of all, first and foremost, you gotta acknowledge that, you know, the devil is trying to drag you back. He's like that crab in a bucket. When you try to escape that bucket, you try to level up in life, there's always gonna be a devil trying to pull you back. So you have to acknowledge that. The devil is warring over your soul. He's trying to win your soul over every single day. He's trying to deceive you, lie to you. The Bible says the whole entire earth is just being deceived by Satan. The whole entire earth. Wow, that's crazy. So you got to acknowledge that Satan wants your soul. Okay, He wants to go to the lake of fire where he's going. Okay, You got to also acknowledge that there's demons out there and they work through people. They work through the people who don't have the Holy Spirit. Okay, They work through people who have hate in their heart. Who are, or They work through people who are Satan's children. Which the Bible talks about the tares and the wheats, the tares being Satan's children. Okay, so those type of people, they they're gonna be used by Satan to try to you know keep you in darkness. Okay, and they might reward you with stuff. They might bless you because the devil's blessings are just curses because it's gonna lead you to a deep pit. Okay, so you always gotta be. Watch comes down to being watchful and knowledge. Understand that you're in a spiritual warfare. Okay, the Bible even says. Um, to be sober and vigilant because the enemy, the devil, wars around like a roaring lion seeking to someone to destroy. Okay? So always keep that in mind. So always, you know, try to be sober the best you can. I know we all struggle through the flesh, but if you have the Holy Spirit, if you're walking with God and you're under obedience, you understand that, yes, you, you're going to, you know, now we're here to fall short, we're going to make mistakes, but there's no excuses. And when you're, over, when you're in a spiritual warfare battle, okay, this is the number one thing, man. It's the number one thing. Number two is your weapons are spiritual okay so what does that what does that mean your weapons are spiritual so when you're in a spiritual war okay and you're fighting against the evil army you're fighting against the spiritual wickedness in high places the bible says that our weapons are not carnal so we don't we don't have we don't get a gun to shoot a demon you know to shoot the devil we don't get a knife to you know y'all know what i'm trying to get at. we don't our weapons are not carnal our weapons are spiritual so what does that mean it means prayer Okay, your prayer reaching out to heavens, God protect me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Y'all know sometimes when you're praying, the spirit just be moving, it'd be it'd be telling you what to say. Okay, I think it's says that talks about that in Romans chapter 8. Also, it could be some fasting, okay? Uh putting your flesh under subjection. That helps out a lot too, building up your spirit up. Okay, so there's many ways where you can fight against the enemy. So always keep that in mind that you're when you're fighting back the spiritual war, your weapons are spiritual. Okay. Number three is obedience to the word of god okay obedience to the word of god we know that through obedience to the word the bible says submit yourself therefore to god so it means to be obedient and resist the devil and he shall flee from you okay james chapter 4 verse 7 you have to know that okay when you resist remember the bible why does the bible say to resist because the devil's gonna always he's gonna always gonna come to you and tempt you he did the same thing to christ okay we all know what happened in matthew chapter 4 okay he did the same thing to christ so he's going to do the same thing to you because Christ told us that the servant is not better than the master. So he's going to try to tempt you, but keep on resisting because eventually he will flee. Because just like how Christ didn't didn't um, didn't fall into the t t temptations of the devil, didn't fall into the lies, the snare, the devil left him alone. The devil has to do the same thing to you too. Okay, so obedience, obedience, obedience. Obedience to what? The word of God. And how did Christ fight back the devil? When the devil was trying to deceive him, bow down and worship me, Christ fought him back through the word, the word of God.
Okay, so this all goes back to our weapons are spiritual. So no no need to go back and forth with trying to should I actually get like physical with someone? Okay, always understand that our weapons are spiritual. Okay, number four is don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. Don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. What does that mean? Okay, so like I said earlier, Satan works through people who do not have the Holy Spirit. Satan works through people who are in darkness. Okay, and these type of people could be professed Christians. They could go to church. You know, just like the Pharisees, the Pharisees, you know, they, they knew the law. They knew all the Bible verses. They, on the outside, they appeared righteous and holy and all religious and all that type of stuff. But, you know, they were still in darkness. Okay, so always keep that in mind. Always keep that in mind. This is very, very important, guys. Do not be ignorant of the same devices. A lot of people leave in the new age. They want to give up the tarot cards. They want to give up the astrology. They want to give up the horoscopes. They want to put down the sage. And they want to put down all that new age stuff, right? And they want to fully trust in God and the Holy Spirit, okay? So because they understand that those are all Satan's devices. Those, those all keep people in a trap, okay? The, the Holy Spirit is what you need. That It comes before all that unnecessary stuff, okay? So and I already have multiple videos on that witchcraft type of stuff. So if you guys want to learn more about that, just search on the title, Witchcraft Mark the Metro Papa. pop up. Okay, so don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. That's key. Okay, number five is true repentance okay the reason why I, I put this in all caps is because people think repentance is like when you just cry out to god god i'm sorry i you know i'm crying and then the same thing that you you know you fell short on you're doing it the next day uh true repentance is actually when you fully turn turn away from whatever you're doing and you don't have the desire you don't have the thought you don't have the um i was gonna say urge but that's not true because we're in our flesh so we're always you know what i mean by we're in our flesh like we're still we walk in the spirit, but our flesh is like trying to fight, you know, fight against us. So I don't want to say urge, but you got to understand that you don't have the desire, you know, uh, because your desire is to please God. So that's true repentance. Okay. True repentance is when you fully turn away from something, not to say that you're not going to ever do it again, but not just when you cry the next day you're doing it. It's like a pattern. Okay. You're crying. That's not repentance, you know, just crying out to God and don't get it wrong. God, you know, he hears our cries. Okay. Um, but it's all obedience, okay? If you're crying for the wrong things, when God has warned you of something, uh, when the Spirit has let you know that, hey, you got to stop doing this, you got to give up that person, and you keep going back and back and crying, that's not true repentance. A lot of people who are carnal, carnally minded, that's their repentance. But repentance is truly turning away from something without the intentions of doing it again, okay? So always keep that in mind. The Bible even says in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13, that whoever confesses their sin uh, shall prosper, but who... Um, but whoever uh, turns his heart away uh, falls into the sheep, okay? Uh, I'll leave that verse somewhere here. I don't want to leave that verse wrong. So I'll leave, make sure, I don't want to say, say that verse wrong. Leave it up here on the screen for you guys to see. Okay, so next one up is six. You want to be led by the spirit and not the flesh, okay? So we know the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 17, it says that uh, walk in the spirit so you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. But the lust of, this, uh, the lust of the flesh wars against your spirit. And the spirit wars against your flesh. So that means that when you're walking in the flesh, your flesh is warring against your spirit. And then when you're walking in the spirit, your spirit is uh, wrestling, fighting against your flesh. So when you when you feel, feed up yourself spiritually, or when you build up yourself spiritually through that spiritual foundation through Christ, the Holy Spirit, okay, um, you're not going to be desiring the flesh no more. Not to say that you're not going to fall short, you're not going to make mistakes, but that's just not going to be a lifestyle for you no more. Because you're born again, you're truly transformed, you have truly repented. Okay, so always be led by the spirit and not the flesh, always. And if you guys do, you know, fall fall short, make a mistake, okay, this is where we just, you know, truly just repent and, uh, you know, live life with a purpose. What is your purpose? Is doing the will of God. Every single person on this earth has a purpose. Those who, or actually, let me take that back. Those who want to follow the narrow path, you have a purpose, okay? So that your purpose is to do the will of God. Now, some people, they want to go on the other path. Or some people who think they're on a the narrow path, but they're just truly being deceived because they're, you know, saying is to see the entire earth. So they're on the other path, you know. So but just, you know, just walk by, uh, walk in the spirit so you won't feel less, less of the flesh. Number seven is have the full armor of God on, okay? So the Bible talks about this many times. It says to put on the armor of God be, uh, because saying is, you know, seeking for someone to devour and... Um, he says to stand firm because the devil, he's, you know, out to destroy. Okay, so we know what the, um, the form of God is, uh, breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the uh, sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, uh, the boots of peace, the belt of truth. Okay, so on the helmet of salvation too as well. Okay, so 
having the full armor of God, it gives you one thing I noticed about it, it gives you wisdom and increased wisdom and increased discernment. Okay. And you're sharp because you have the sword. So whenever you, a deceiver, a false prophet, a false teacher, whatever, try to lie to you, deceive you, take you to the other path because they're working for the devil unknowingly or knowingly. You have the word to attack back so you can't be deceived. That's why I tell people all the time, read the Bible for yourself. Okay, don't wait to go to church on Sundays or don't wait for to go on social media, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Not to say that you can't go to church or you can't watch YouTube videos. Obviously, I'm a content creator, but I'm saying simply don't rely on a human. Make sure you're relying on your faith in Jesus and also in your relationship with God and actually applying your faith with works to actually read the Bible. Okay, that is a work, okay? actually reading the Bible, studying to show yourself approved. So this is how they overcome spiritual warfare. Number one, be sober and diligent, watchful, and acknowledge that you're in a spiritual warfare. Number two is your weapons are spiritual. Number three is obedience to the word of God. Number four is do not be ignorant of Satan's devices. Number five is true repentance. Number six is be led by the spirit and not the flesh. Number seven is have the full armor of Yah. Okay. Now I understand guys, the dark is kind of dark, low key. The lightning is not good at nighttime. So I'm going to fix that for my next video. But if you guys made this far, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you guys wish to support me, my links are down below in the description. Love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.